salutations. I'm Gil. And I'm Gil, and this is Strategic Prepper. All right, so I'm hanging out with my buddy here. I'm um, going to go over just some of the different kits that, that we got uh, going on. Uh, Gil Sr. is going to go over some of your long-term uh, storage options and whatnot. So, unfortunately, not going to really be able to see me, but, uh, well, fortunately or unfortunately. Uh, but I want it, the camera to be close enough to actually see the content. So, we're going to start off with, uh, with the smallest system, and it's actually what I carry on my person. So, I carry a soft T wide tourniquet. Um, I carry... This uh, Wild Hedgehog tactical kit that with a lot of the components removed, nitro gloves, hemostatic gauze, stair strips, uh, and some basic first aid band-aids there. And so this is on me uh, at all times. Unless I'm working out, um, I have these in my pockets. Uh, I carry, I, I, I wear a 511 Ridgeline style pants, so it's got that, that third pocket between the front and the rear pocket. Um, so that really helps out. Um, I know some of you guys have asked about uh, tactical systems and whatnot, so obviously we have them. Videos will come at some point, um, but so I carry an IFAC on my on my kit, and so let me talk real quick about IFACs. Uh, you know they stand for individual first aid kit. They're not really about first aid though. Um, for the most part, the IFAC's goal it's it's a dedicated kit. Uh, designed for emergency trauma. Um, generally speaking, gunshot wounds and whatnot, but not just gunshot wounds, it could be lacerations and stuff like that, but we're talking emergency trauma. So when I have a specific IFAC kit, I'm not putting basic first aid like band-aids. I'm not putting um, long-term first aid. I'm not, I'm not putting foot powder in there. I'm not putting things um, that, I, that I, for example, do have in my three-day bag when I'm, and when I'm going hiking and whatnot. Uh, you know, I got moleskin. Uh, I've got uh, like I got snake bite kits. I've got um, uh, foot powder, all that kind of stuff. Uh, ibuprofen. None of that goes in my effect. This is specifically for emergency trauma, right? So if you sever your femoral artery, for example, um, time is of the essence. I don't have time to start digging around, and searching through stuff. So as you do, as you put your, together your kits, and you can buy pre-made kits. Um, North American Rescue is good. Uh, Chinook Medical is good. There's a few good companies. Um, and we might, we might start recommending some, but, um, um, or you can make them. I've made my own kits, but you got to keep that in mind. Emergency trauma. Somebody's bleeding. Your hands are covered in blood. I got to get to this equipment. Okay. So I have one here, this particular kit. When I'm wearing the plate carrier, it, and I open this, it's all there at my fingertips and it doesn't just fall out. Right. So I got two, uh, compressed gauze rolls, hemostatic gauze, quick clot. I got two um, packets of, of nitro gloves. I do have some medical tape. I've got a flat trauma bandage, uh, compact chest seals, and a nasal pharyngeal airway. Shears and the tourniquet. So the trauma shears and the tourniquet, you'll notice commonality between the kits. Uh, shears and trauma, uh, shears and tourniquets got to be accessible quickly. So when I take a look, let's, let's take a look at this other kit here. Sorry, buddy. So you look at this kit. Let me sit up for a second here. All right, when I open this flap, I can immediately pull these out. Why? Well, the shears, I may have to cut away uh, clothing and whatnot, but the, but the tourniquet's a big thing. All right, when are we using tourniquet? We're using a tourniquet um, to stop a, a arterial bleeding on a limb. Um, something that could kill you relatively quickly within a couple minutes. So number one, make sure you're not getting a counterfeit. Uh, do not buy these off of Amazon. So many retailers or so many sellers are selling counterfeits. I buy mine from North American Rescue. Uh, Chinook Medical is a good one. Uh, there's a couple other ones too, but really if you stick with those two, you'll be fine. Uh, they should cost about 30 bucks a piece. If they're 10 or 15, for example, they're probably fake. Uh, and there's some good videos on there how to spake a fake tack, uh, cat tourniquet. Another thing too, you always take it out of the packaging. You never keep it in the packaging. So you think about, you know, your, your, it's an emergency. Your mind's freaking out. Your cans are covered in blood. And now you've got to try to open this plastic packaging um, and then stage the tourniquet, which nowadays they actually come pre-staged usually, which is pretty good. They used to not. But you'll notice I have mine. This, this strap here is open, so the windlass is accessible. I've got this 
is nice and open, so it's it's big enough to where I can fit my limb through there. And all I got to do is I slip it over, and I can yank this and tighten it. Uh, and we'll do some we'll do some videos at some point about how to actually use these. But they're readily accessible, right? If I'm using, if I'm pulling this, my life is on the line. I'm not going to risk it by by going cheap, and I'm not going to risk it by not properly staging this. And you'll notice this kit here. This is the one that I keep in front of the vehicle. Very similar. Gloves are readily accessible. Compressed gauze, hemostatic gauze back here. I've got that flat fold trauma bandage underneath here. All this is held together too. So if I drop it, everything doesn't just go spilling out everywhere. Nasal pharyngeal airway and chest seals. All right. So this is again, we're talking trauma. All right. So this isn't basic first aid. This isn't I skinned my knee. This is somebody's dying. Um, and I need to immediately stop the bleeding before they die within a couple minutes. All right. So let's take a look at this. Chinook Medical, they make good gear. I'm going to tell you guys right now, a good first responder bag is going to cost you some money. Um, of course, when I first started out, I didn't have a lot of money. So uh, I slowly built the, the most important things first. And then I added some components piece by piece. Um, with this particular one, I ended up, when I first got them, I saved up money and just bought the whole kit. Um, and so my wife and I each have this kit in our vehicles. So even though this is not the dedicated trauma kit, I still have trauma supplies, right? So when I open it up, there's an emergency. First thing that falls out is the tourniquet pre-staged, like I mentioned. Gloves, PPE is important. Put on your nitro gloves. Um, if they're not easily accessible, you're not going to be able to find them in an emergency, okay? CPR mask in here. In fact, let me just take you guys off the tripod so I could show you. Trauma shears, bandage, tape, um, and I won't go into exactly how to use all this quite yet. This kit does come with some hemorrhaging equipment, so another trauma uh, bandage, compressed gauze, uh, their version of a tourniquet it's better the SWAT T is better than nothing but I really wouldn't recommend that you buy that um, if you can get access to a cat tourniquet they work much better I could do a video on that at some point and then here you can see how difficult it is to get out one-handed uh, there's there's some hemostatic galls in there as well and, and that's why I created this separate trauma kit that I keep in the front of the vehicle uh, just because really in the event of trauma, I don't want to, uh, in the event of trauma, I don't want to have to, to deal with trying to dig through this. All right, and then we got some other stuff. And you could tell all this is labeled. Medications, different medical instruments, wound care, blister, burn. Again, more burn gels. Uh, we talked about the CPR mask, right, at the front of this here. I've even got uh, N95 masks. I've got uh, space blankets. I believe there's actually even an eye wash saline solution. Yeah, there is. Eye wash, right? So this is a good general duty um, first responder bag um, that'll handle a lot of your first aid events and, uh, and some of the emergency trauma. There's also a splint here in the back. Uh, if you go on Chinook Medical, uh, you start looking up their, their, their complete, I think this is the complete vehicle kit. Yeah, I, th I think this cost me about 180, almost 200 for this kind of kit. And that's about what, what a comprehensive kit like this is going to run. Um, but you can see, so this is what I carry. Basically, this is this stays in the vehicle. Um, I got this IFAC here on my plate carrier that you can see there. This stays in the vehicle uh, up front with a separately labeled trauma uh, on the on the glove compartment. I carry the that initial kit that I uh, showed you guys, I carry that on my pocket. Um, I'm actually currently building a separate IFAC for my range bag when we go shooting. That way I got one dedicated for that. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's pretty much our, our different medical systems. Um, I do plan on getting some more of those first responder bags at some point, just because it is nice to have um, that broad capability in other systems. But right now what I do, um, you know, what I do right now is, is I basically just uh, take that with me, right? So you see in that video we made about us clearing the land. I just took that out of the vehicle um, and I took that with us. And so, yeah, let me hand it over to, uh, to Gil Sr. He's going to show you 
Um, some of your big picture stuff, he's going to show you actually a larger first responder kit and how to, uh, to store some of your, some of your medical supplies. Um, that way you can build up the supply, um, you know, in the event you use something like this and you really can't replenish your supplies. If you've got it stocked up, um, you can, and you can uh, keep yourself in business. All right, Gil. Okay, we're outside here. We're going to look at some uh, first aid kits, and uh, we're trying to get this in before the rain comes. Again, it's been raining all week. Um, our uh, uh, neighbors out in Lake Charles are underwater, and uh, everything's kind of wet out here. So we're trying to get this in pretty quick. It's a little windy. Um, all right, so let's take a look at um, the first level of first aid, and that is a small first aid kit that I have mine attached to my get home bag. So let's take a look. Pull this up. And uh, open this up. And what do I have? I've got some foot powder. I've got some uh, blister medication. Uh, the thought here is that if I'm using this, I have to take care of my feet. I'm probably going to do some walking. Um, I do have some uh, a trauma pack in case there's bleeding, snake bite. Um, some pain meds, burn gel, Aleve, uh, some gauze tape. You should always have gauze tape and ace bandage. And I have my tourniquet in here. Um, nothing really fancy. This is an individual kit. You can't get too much into this. Uh, so, all right, let me close this back up. All right, so as you can see, it's small, compact, has some very basic items in it. All right, that is it. Also notice that I have a, um, so I have a patch that has my blood type on it, just in case someone comes across me, um, that little bit of extra information I think might help someone. So let me, uh, let me direct you over here inside my vehicle. You see the uh, first aid marker. So let me open this up. I carry a first aid kit in the vehicle. And this has got some basic stuff. Um, some gauze, wraps, band-aids, ice packs, antiseptics. Uh, got your mask, got your gloves. All right, so basic stuff here. Again, not a really big kit. Um, iPads here, uh, you have iPad, not a different iPad. Um, this is a, a patch for the eye, not a, a computer device. So, a small kit, but it may have uh, something that I need to help to take care of some of this injury that I find on the road. So these are two of the kits. This is what I think everyone should start with, is an individual kit for themselves and a small kit for their vehicle um, and for their home. So we're going to go inside. Notice it's marked so that if somebody else has to go into the vehicle to find it, it's easily identifiable. So let's go inside and take a look at what I've got for the family kit. All right, we are back inside and uh, we just looked at our uh, kit out in the vehicle. So I've got some first aid or some medical supplies here. I want to take a moment to kind of go over uh, more of a philosophical view. So if you remember our, uh, um, our stages of development, uh, we've got a video on that up here. We uh, talk about building capabilities and we build those uh, capabilities in stages and we start in steps incrementally so that we don't burden ourselves, uh, so that we don't overwhelm ourselves. And we build three days of sustainability, three weeks, um, three months, a year, three years. And we just build that out. And medical is one of those areas of capabilities that we need to build out. We're not talking just supplies here. I'm going to show you supplies, but we're also talking about skills. So at the earliest stages, like we mentioned in the car, you want to start with first aid kit. We just opened that up in the truck, so I don't need to go over that again. So we'll set that off to the side. But as you develop as a self-reliant person, as a prepper, as a uh, preparedness-minded person, you want to build your medical skills 
your medical capabilities. So remember from our other videos, capabilities is knowledge, skills, and gear combined. Okay, so we're going to go over gear, but the capabilities, the, the skills starts out with basic first aid training, and then you can increase that to medical first responder, uh, maybe take some a tactical trauma uh, course, but uh, you want to increase those capabilities and you want to get the gear that's appropriate for that. So with me, I had mentioned uh, outside that we're going to talk about our home kit. So this is a bag that we can take anywhere. When we've got uh, groups, it is designed for uh, a bit more of a capability than the first aid kit. So let me show you what we've got in here. Let's start up front. Basic uh, stethoscope. Uh, light. So and a light to check the eyes. Some basic tools. Different scissors. Uh, so we have some basic tools up here. I've got room to add equipment to this. Um, but uh, it's not jam-packed full. Over here on this side. Now... Don't really know a whole lot to do with it, but this kit came with um, a birthing kit for if someone's having a baby. It's all everything's put together there, including cutting the umbilical cord and all that. So I leave that off to the side because you know what? You never know. I'm not having any more kids, but someone else around me might. Let me come over to the other side. Now, I like to have things that we're going to use more often, have them easily accessible. So I've got a bunch of ice packs here. I've got some uh, uh, antiseptic. I've got a number of different large gauzes. Easy to get to. Look, I just grab, boom, there's a whole stack here. Um, bleeding injuries, uh, injuries that require ice packs are very common. So this equipment is very accessible on the side pouch. In the top pouch is where all the goodies are for this bag. So again, keep in mind that it's important to get the skills, not just the gear with medical, it's important to have the skills. So I have a CPR mask. Um, if I need the CPR mask, I'm going to need it probably pretty quickly, so I'd leave that right up on top. Um, very visible, can't miss it. Trauma bandage, same thing. If I'm pulling out the trauma bandage, I uh, am probably really limited by time. So things like splints are buried a little bit lower. So time does dictate how I put some of this gear in here. And here's a, a backup mask for CPR. So let me kind of go through this. We can see in here a number of bandages, different sizes, different antiseptics. Um, this is an um, eye wash solution and uh, hand wash and more rolls of gauze and rolls of gauze and rolls of gauze and uh, uh, poison absorbent. One thing I do want to say that it is important that a person spend time with their medical gear. Um, there's a lot of stuff here, and if I'm not using it, I may not realize that I've got something. Um, I've got a lot of different uh, equipment, uh, triangle badges. A real quick story. I had a bag like this once, and I had to respond to an incident. This was out in the desert in California. Um, a poor guy uh, uh, had uh, walked in front of an 18-wheeler. It was going about 55 miles an hour. And uh, uh, 10 o'clock at night, it was all dark, and I showed up. But I had the bag, but I wasn't completely familiar with the bag. One of the first things I did was try to find um, some gloves. Because that, I mean, that's just, you got to protect yourself first. And I quickly looked and I couldn't find them. So I found one spare glove and I did everything with one hand. When I got back the next day, I went over the bag and just did a, a recap of the situation. You know what I found sitting right up on top? Was... I had a box of gloves that was about this big, sitting right on top of the bag. But in the excitement, and also the lack of light, but in the excitement, um, I didn't know where the gloves were, and I couldn't find those gloves, even though I had a box of 100 of them. 
So I learned from that. And I do uh, visit this kit every so often just to go through it like I'm doing right now so that I have an idea of what I have and where it is. So let's continue. Uh, I have different size gauzes. This is a uh, much larger for obviously larger injuries. Um, I've got the splints I had mentioned. This is a, a uh, neck brace if I need to immobilize the neck. All right, this is basic protective equipment. A uh, very large trauma bandage uh, over here. So you can see I've got different size bandages, different size splints, finger splints. I've got stuff from poison control to burn control to, uh, um, and in fact, here's, here's my big box of gloves right here. Very big, easy to see. So I have a wide range of supplies here. It's important to know how to use the supplies. And um, so as you, as you develop your capabilities as a prepper, as you build more food, as you build more water reserves, water purification, you build your, secure, uh, your, you build your tactical and security skills, you also want to take care of your medical skills so that is more than just getting the supplies. Supplies are important. But you have to make the uh, uh, you have to take the measures to learn how to use the equipment. Where do you start? Uh, it's easy to start watching YouTube videos. All right, so that is our family bag. I do want to spend a little bit of time uh, talking about our reserves. We also have this uh, kit. These are Milwaukee toolboxes that we turned into a first aid supply. And uh, as you can see, we have, as you can see over here, we have the different compartments labeled. Reason being is when you need it, you don't want to have to open everything up. You want to be able to find things real quickly. And uh, what I've got here, based on our risk assessment process, where you analyze the risk, uh, the, that's how these are packed. So things that are more likely to happen, I want them up top. So, stings, regular band-aids, disinfectant cold packs, um, these type of things are up on top. And real easy, just pop these off, and I can get to the supplies. The other nice thing about this, if I pull this out, you can see on the side that each container also tells me what's in it so I don't have to spend a lot of time um, looking through each container. But I chose this because it's modular. I can take I can take one uh, uh, one container off. Over here, more gauze, larger gauze, larger elastic wraps, uh, blood clotting pads, more tape, more gauze, more gauze, gauze. Because this is likely stuff that we're going to use. It's near the top. Okay. Let me set this over here. Now stuff that uh, uh, it's still easy to get to. Um, so I've got burn cream, burn gel, burn pads. Um, some more tape, oral gel, thermometers. Some stuff is lower on the urgency um, as far as uh, time best time-based treatment so I've got that down here or less likely got things like tweezers as you can see it's just easy to get to things let's see what's in this one here tourniquet splints CPR masks face mask and ace bandages so we can see extra supplies here easy to get to extra masks, extra splints, dust masks, boxes of masks, a bunch of tourniquets. And yes, they are the cat tourniquets, not some uh, cheap copy that it's going to break. Um, I picked that up from a Bear Independent. He had a video on how to test these, and uh, I went and checked, and they are all the good ones. So uh, I've got chest seal pads in here for uh, chest wounds, more uh, splints. 
And as we go down, we've got more supplies down here. And let's just check what we have here. We can see hydrogen peroxide, alcohol, and just extra stock. So this is kind of my catch-all at the bottom, which is why it's at the bottom. Eye injury kits, uh, spare first aid kit, if I need to give a first aid kit to somebody. Spare thermometer. I had thermometers in one of the other drawers, but I have some uh, extra ones. Extra gauze, replacement gauze. Um, just a lot of different extra kits. I have alcohol containers down at the bottom. Uh, peroxide on the other side. So just a wide range of equipment. More trauma beds. But it's very easy to transport too. Because I've got the handle. I can just put it all back together. It takes no time. Almost no time to get what I want. Speed sometimes is important. And it's got wheels. And it becomes a hand truck. And I could move my supplies wherever I need to. If I need to bug out with them, they can come with me very easily. So that's just one way to set up medical supplies um, and like I said you really need to make sure that you've got the training and the capabilities and the practice to go with that. All right thanks for watching join us on our Patreon site. Patreon is a member site where uh, we provide deeper content and you have an opportunity to support us so that we can continue doing this. So again I hope you enjoyed and please join us there. Stay safe and stay prepared.